Hello and welcome to iCave. Dave, this is iCave Live. We're doing your questions and whatnot. And it feels a little bit like a radio studio today. I don't know why it feels a bit different, but how is everyone? Welcome to the chat. I don't know who's actually here. Probably not many people yet. However, this is kind of going to be this week's um, iCave Dave Live uh, aluminium podcast, maybe, as well, because um, I've been away for the week. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, but yes, welcome, welcome. If you're here and you're watching, do jump on. I'm just going to share this on the Twitter. I'm still not calling it X. I refuse. I refuse. But let's go. Let's uh, get this shared. How is everyone? Anyone here? Anyone here? Is it just echoey? Is it just me? That would be embarrassing. But regardless, welcome to the Aluminium Podcast, Apple News with a British accent. And this is going to be a bit of a different show. It's a live stream that I'm doing over on YouTube, but we're also going to put it out as the audio podcast. I don't have a guest this week. Um, not right now, at least. We are uh, We're going to do this. We're going to pop it out. We've got a few people joining us in the chat now. So um, tech for your needs uh, is here. Hello, folks. Um, Rob Lincoln is here. Hey, hey, hi. How are you? Um, yeah, we're going to do this a little bit differently from normal. This is going to be a live stream that we also put out as the podcast. We've got a few topics to catch up on from this week because I've been away. I've been... Uh, uh, vacationing with the family, so um, not uh, at my desk. Um, we've been in the middle of a field on the Isle of Wight, which is a, a little island just right down at the bottom of the uh, British Isles. It's tiny, um, but we were sitting, uh, you know, we stayed in the caravan. Uh, it's a, quite a traditional British holiday to do, I guess. Um, a bit of swimming with the kids, all that kind of stuff. Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Had a nice time. Um, fun little entertainment in the evenings. Basic British caravan holiday. Lovely. Um, so, yes, uh, all good. Uh, we've got Michael Moy in the chat. We've got Ross Neem in the chat. You guys are here. You are going to be my co-hosts for this episode. So, please throw in your questions down in the chat. We are going to go through some topics. So, coming up in this week's show, we have Tim Cook sells nearly 200,000 shares of Apple. Uh, and we'll be talking about how much that's earned him and why he might have done that. Um Four new iPads have shown up in regulatory listings over in India. This is ahead of the May launch that we're expecting. So we'll talk a bit about iPads. Um, Apple has laid off 600 people after the car project was cancelled. Uh, maybe there's a reason for that that we'll come to. And we've also had the first kind of uh, case blanks, I think they're called. Uh, like the stainless steel versions of the iPhone 16 16 Pro uh, 16 plus and 16 pro max um, so we've seen them we kind of know exactly what the phone device is going to physically look like at this point which is uh, different so good um, you guys uh, yeah throw up any questions that you've got in the chat that will be really cool and we will get to those but I think we'll uh, we'll head up a couple of these topics first and if you've got anything good coming up uh, Michael Moy is saying iPad mini please take my money Sadly, I don't think that's one of the ones that we've seen these uh, these regulatory listings for, but we will come to the iPads next. Uh, first of all, Tim Cook selling 200,000 shares of Apple for $33.2 million, which has got him, after tax, a pretty cool uh, $16.4 million. Um, now, there's a lot of people that are sort of reading quite a lot into this. Um, it probably doesn't mean too much. Uh, sorry to disappoint everyone, but because Tim Cook is at the top of uh, a company that is as big and important to the American stock market as Apple, uh, they pretty much have to schedule in when they're going to sell stock. Uh, these 200,000 shares, it's about 192,000 shares in actuality, I believe, um, were a performance-related bonus, and he's basically sold the whole lot. And I think it was preordained that they would be sold on a specific date, the date that they yielded, all that sort of stuff. Michael in the chat is probably better on this sort of stuff, but S uh, SEC stuff, Securities and Exchange uh, Commission, I don't know a huge amount about American 
economics, but I think uh, you're basically, if you have insider knowledge of what a company is doing, then you're not really allowed to use that information to make money out of it on the stock market. So um, that's something just to bear in mind. This is probably not as huge of a, uh, you know, huge of a deal as we might have thought. So, yeah, Tim Cook has sold some shares. Uh, he has also said that he's going to give away basically his entire fortune. Uh, bear in mind, Tim doesn't have kids. Um, he wants to give away all of his fortune before he dies, I believe, to good causes, which is pretty pretty stand-up thing to do when you're uh, running the, one of the world's biggest companies. Pretty good, pretty good. I don't think anyone can knock him for that. They'll probably be annoyed about what he gives it to, but you can only do so much, right? Right, let's have a quick look at the chat before we move on to our next topic. When next topic will be the iPads, right? So uh, in the chat here, we have uh, Tech for Your Needs is asking, how has it been living with the MacBook Air? I love it. Uh, it is my pretty much my primary device. So I do have the Mac Mini also on the desktop. That's in Project 91, which is hiding behind my keyboard at the moment, um, just because I, I'm not using that. I'm using the MacBook Air with the main display on the uh, on the desk at the moment. But the 13-inch MacBook Air, it's the M2 that I've got. It's 8 gigs and 256, no, 512 on storage. I, I upped it on the storage uh, on this one. And I got it on release day, so it was more expensive then as well. But it's great. It's absolutely superb. Uh, the lack of a fan has made zero uh, impact on my life. Having 8 gigs of RAM has made zero impact on my life. I would say the... Uh, one weakness of it, I guess, would be because I went for the midnight. There is a little bit of anodizing wear just on the uh, corners, just because that's where my Apple Watch rubs, just on that kind of... It's quite a quite a sharp lip. I think they could have perhaps chamfered this slightly. I think Johnny Ive would have liked to chamfer there. He always liked uh, a nice bevel. But other than that, uh, the display is beautiful. I have no issues with the display at all. It gets dusty. That's the one thing. I, I've never noticed any issues with fingerprints and stuff. Are they visible? Kinda. Is it a big deal? No. Clean your stuff. Just because you have uh, a computer that's a different colour doesn't mean it's not gross. So at least here I can tell when it's gross and clean it. You know, that's uh, that's as bad as it gets. But power-wise, it's absolutely fine. I do Final Cut on this thing. I do Photoshop. I do... Uh, I mean, right now we've got Safari running. We've got Messages, uh, Notes, Photoshop, OBS... For some reason, Spotify, which I only actually use for making sure that my podcasts upload properly, um, and WhatsApp running at the moment. But quite often, I'd also have Final Cut running all within this 8 gigs of RAM. No issues whatsoever. So uh, no dramas with that whatsoever. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great machine. I would definitely recommend the M3 right now. I don't think the $100 difference to go down to the M2 is probably worthwhile for most people. Uh, it's probably worth getting that extra year of life out of it and better performance for those seven to eight years that it's going to be a, a very useful computer, I would say, um, for the sake of $100. But if you haven't got the extra $100, the M2 is going to do you pretty good too. Uh, Rob Lincoln is saying, uh, have you kept up with the fallout of Apple cancelling the problem with Jon Stewart? Kind of shitty reasons. Um, so... We kind of knew this already, right? Uh, as far as I know, it wasn't cancelled for ratings because I think it was quite popular. It was certainly doing really well for Apple TV Plus and, and Jon Stewart through social media and through TikTok and through all of those kind of bits and bobs. I believe it was, obviously, there are con uh, controversial topics that Jon likes to cover in his shows, which I appreciate very much. I'm a massive fan of... Uh, last week tonight with John Oliver and Daily Show with John Stewart and with Noah and all of that kind of stuff, like the political kind of stuff, I do really like. Um, I understand though why Apple doesn't want to touch on some of those thornier topics because what they are avoiding is division. Um, you know, Tim Cook has met with Donald Trump and I'm sure he's met with Joe Biden. And now the DOJ is after them. And if they upset different government people, then it can make life very difficult for a company. Um, Apple is quite principled, I would say. They're quite involved in a lot of topics that are potentially uh, a little bit more <sighs> probably left wing, uh, certainly with Tim Cook at the helm. 
And I think that it would be difficult for them to be super involved. You know, they don't want to be criticizing China when China makes all of their stuff. Um, I think that's probably fair to say uh, whether it's the right decision or not. I do not know. I don't have that information, but I think that's basically the reason as far as I can see. Um, right, let's see what else we've got. Uh, 64 million isn't a lot in big cap tech. Uh, it was 16 million that he took, uh, Tim Cook. Um, just having a quick look through these questions here. Michael Moy, I worked at Oracle and uh, he'd sell a million every day when it wasn't a quiet period. Okay, fair enough. One of the VPs, right. Uh, Jeff Cropley, uh, Twitter and X, Twix, like the candy bar. Yeah, I, I guess Twix could be a good name for it. I quite like that. Um, I still maintain, though, that uh, tweets should now be called kisses if it's called X. I think that's fair. Uh, Rob Lincoln, could uh, that could be put on his gravestone. He liked a nice bevel. Yeah, I think um, Johnny Ive, very, very into a bevel. Uh, I remember very clearly when the iPhone 5 came out, which I think was the one with the polished bevels, the beveled edge, the bezels, beveled edge. It's a beveled edge. It was highly polished. It was beautiful. And he was talking about it like a piece of jewellery. Um, Johnny Ive, British guy, lovely, lovely accent, aluminium. Yeah, that's where the name of this podcast comes from. We have to we have to talk nicely about him. Anyway, let's move on to the next uh, topic. Do keep throwing your questions into the chat and we will keep coming back to them. This is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit more kind of radio, social, chatty. I think it's going to be fun. Let's uh, Let's just go for it. Uh, so, four new iPads have shown up in regulatory listings in India, and these are listed as A2898, A2899, I'm terrible at reading, sorry, uh, A2836 and A2837. iPad Airs and Pros, these are both expected to be released in May, according to the latest from Mark Gurman, who has also said they're going to be coming out in March and also in April at different times and also at the end of last year. So, um, oh, thank you very much to Mark Tech for a uh, a little super chat there. Thank you so much, sir, for a $2.49. Uh, Euro You're a Euro guy. Um, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, but yes, May launches are kind of unusual, right? When did Apple last release stuff in May? It's like the month right before WWDC. That's odd. Now, some people have been saying that this is because there are going to be specific new features that are going to come with iOS 18 or iPadOS 18 for these iPads. But that makes no sense whatsoever. Because even though the beta software is going to be coming out in WWDC, it's not going to be available to the general public until, you know, a couple of weeks later for the public beta, but not fully released until September. So that makes no sense whatsoever. So I would personally discount that completely. They may be putting in some new features that would be in an iOS 17.5, but we were hearing from Mark and other people that it would be in 17.4 and that was what they were waiting for and that's already here and they've not done that. It sounds like they've had some issues with uh, with actual manufacturing. That's where the uh, the drama has happened probably with displays because we're moving with the pros from uh, mini LED displays on the larger one at least and regular LCD on the smaller pro to slightly bigger OLEDs on both and slightly thinner all the way through. Um, so that's going to be great. But I think the more important and the more exciting uh, new product is probably going to be that big Mac, uh, iPad Air. The big iPad Air is by far and away going to be more impactful on Apple's business. I think there's a, and I'm not sure in a good way, if I'm honest. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong here. There are a lot of stores like shops that use 12.9 inch iPad Pros as cash registers, right? So they don't need a Pro. They just need a big. So a lot of those sales that were going to Pros may well now be going to iPad Airs at a much lower price, potentially sort of, I think we're talking just under 800, maybe 850 at a push, but like 799, that could well be the price of this larger iPad Air. And I think that's actually going to hurt Apple in terms of revenues, because I, I think a lot of people will trade down to that iPad Air, unless these new pros have got 
something massive going on. And I think if they have got something massive going on, they have to have an event to launch it because why would they miss out on that? That makes no sense to me at all. Um, do let me know your thoughts on this in the comments because I'm not 100% convinced that they can launch a bigger iPad Air and new OLED iPad Pros with potentially MagSafe, we've heard about maybe, with potentially a new Apple Pencil, with potentially some new kind of crazy features that are going to make everyone happy, and potentially moving the cameras to where they're supposed to be on that longer side, and new keyboards that make it look a lot more like a MacBook. Um, and they're not going to bother with an event. They're just going to be like, oh, yes, and, and there's some new stuff. It's all on the website. Just go and check it out. It's on the website. That does not make any sense to me. And I've said that all the way through. And I'll probably be proved wrong because that's what happens most of the time. But does that make sense to anyone? Like, this seems like a lot of things to be releasing and going, yeah, just just have it. It's fine. Just have it. Just, it's on the website. Just You can check it out. Just have a, have a poke around. It doesn't sound like the way that Apple launches products to me. I mean, I might have lost my mind. There is there is always that possibility that I've just lost my mind. But out of you guys in the chat, who is uh, expecting that you would go for the uh, the bigger Air as opposed to maybe the Pro? Because I don't think that the uh, I don't think Promotion is as big of a seller as people think. Uh, Rob Lincoln is saying he would go for the big Air. I agree with you. Although I want the smaller iPad. I actually want the mini. That's that's the iPad that I want. Uh, I'm thinking the pros have been pricing themselves out of the meat of the market. A big air would be closer to the sweet spot. That is a really good point. With the iPad Pro, I understand why they've done it. They want to make more money out of iPads. Putting better cameras on the back of an iPad is not surely the way to sell better iPads. Like, I understand it works for your phone because that's the phone, that's your camera that you've got with you all the time. Um, I, I don't quite get it. Uh, if you if you want to make the displays better, you know, that's great. OLED displays, great. ProMotion, great. Better FaceTime camera, great. If you must have a keyboard... Make it a good keyboard. You know, they're 350 bucks. Yeah, might as well make it a nice one to use. So I think that makes sense. I think that makes sense a lot. But but the idea that a lot of people are saying, well, obviously the iPad Pro should run macOS because, you know, you're paying sort of Mac money for it. It's a different device. It doesn't have a keyboard. That's fine. It does have pencils. That's cool. That's different. Make use of that rather than rather than hoping that people will use it a bit like a laptop and will attach it to a keyboard which just saps the battery as opposed to adding any battery because that that bat the keyboard space in your mac is where your battery lives we're trying to pack it all into just the display with a with an ipad so that's not a great way of doing things there's there's a lot of compromises i think like the window management thing. I understand that people want better window management. But also, have you considered using it like an iPad? Like, this is why we have uh, created, uh, you know, make iPad iPad again. Hey, Evan, how are you? Michael Pepper's here as well. Uh, just say hello to everyone. And John, uh, let's go through these uh, these comments actually quite quickly um so rob lincoln is saying that the ipad pros have been pricing themselves out we've done that one uh john saying when my refurbished 2018 12.9 inch pad uh pro finally kicks the bucket in like 2030 i'll pick up a big air too i mean it's gonna lose uh probably gonna lose um updates in about two years i would guess that's probably where we're looking at um Michael Pepper is saying, uh, I think a 12.9 inch iPad Air would make sense for someone who wants an iPad to go along with their MacBook Air for sidecar and such, but aren't going to spend more on the iPad than their MacBook. That makes a lot of sense, actually. A sidecar is a great uh, bit of kit. Michael Moy is saying that I need a mini for my medical kit and a bigger iPad won't fit. Um, that's fair. You know, the smaller form factor is important. And I think the iPad mini, as I've said, is the one that I want to go for. 
that's my sweet spot. Um, Evan Rogers is saying, uh, what upgrades would make the new iPad Pro worth a buy for someone with a 2020 iPad Pro? I don't think there's any reason for someone with a 2020 iPad Pro to buy a new iPad Pro. I don't think there's any reason that you should. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of my answer. Uh, iPads will go for a good five, uh, you know, five to seven years. And I don't think many people are doing enough on them that they need to update them that quickly. That's fine. Um, so, you know, there's there's definitely some stuff there. What what we would need to do is, I don't know, like if the display is that much better, I guess that might help. Uh, I think in the next couple of comments down, I wish they'd bring variable refresh rate to non-120 hertz displays. Yeah, so this is one of the things. I think the variable ones on the iPad Pros right now go only down to like 10 hertz, is it? But the iPhones go down to one hertz. So with the OLED, we may well get that going down to one hertz. And maybe you could have sidecar mode, uh, not sidecar, standby mode on those. That would be really good. That would be a good use of it. I think that would make a great kind of background device that just always has the always on display. Maybe you use it for home kit type stuff. That would be quite cool. That that might tempt me to go for a pro rather than the others. So it becomes more like the iPhone pros where you've got a couple of extra features but it's not like productivity stuff um i don't think you should have mac os on there that makes no sense but i think some mac apps being able to run in like the ipad version of catalyst might be a good thing uh, so you can kind of port them over but understanding that they won't be fully uh fully integrated that might work um saran Byte is here a larger iPad Air will be a big seller, but personally, I will still recommend people get a refurb M1 or M2 iPad Pro. Even if you don't need ProMotion, Mini LED Plus quad speakers will make a difference. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the speakers is possibly a, a good a good shout there. Um, ProMotion, as I've said many, many times, makes no difference to me. I can't see it on an iPhone, on an iPad, on anything. I've got old eyes, even my 4K display up here that I run off the iPad Air runs at 30 because who cares? It doesn't matter. It's, it looks absolutely fine to me. <laughs> oh, heresy. But, um, yes, moving on here, John has uh, said, I only read sheet music with it. Yeah, that's what I use my iPad Air for. It's a 2020 iPad Air, A14 inside it. I use it for sheet music quite a lot of the time. My kids use it. Uh, I use it for a bit of sketching and stuff like that. I have got a uh, a different Apple Pencil at the moment. This one is from MetaPen, which I've been sent to test, and I've taken far too long to do it. But it l does look identical to the Apple Pencil. The only difference, if it's still got some charges, yeah, it lights up on the end um, when you turn it on. But it still charges the same way. It still charges off the side of it. I think it's a really cool little bit of kit. It doesn't have the pressure sensitivity, just like Apple's new pencil, but this thing's like 20 bucks. Um, instead of 70 so that's a win anyway uh, tech for your needs says some channels run stolly on the iPad Christopher Lawley comes to mind what's stolly I don't know this uh, I uh, sorry solly um, it's not stolly that's that's the vodka isn't it um, okay what's solly please do tell I don't know that one uh, just set up iPad mini for my son today first time using uh, Apple's child account stuff he can now facetime with my parents without taking my phone uh thanks michael um interesting yeah my kids have both got uh ipad and ninth generations which we got them during lockdown or like just before lockdown um so yeah they do exactly that they facetime with their cousins and family members and stuff like that uh play minecraft quite a lot all that sort of stuff but yeah, Apple's uh, family stuff is really, really good, and it's it's very well done. They can't download an app without it coming through to you, and then you authorize, and it comes through like a text message uh, with the request. So that's pretty cool. Um, Rob Lincoln, make the Pro a recording rig for Apple Vision Pro. I mean, yeah, why why not have cameras at either end of it? This is something that I've mentioned in a couple of the podcasts before, but the iPad, uh, sorry, the iPhone, iPod. One of these days, I'm going to get the word right. The iPod Touch, when they were putting the little loop holders on the bottom corner, um, opposite where the camera is, I was convinced that was going to be for uh, 3D video because it came out about the same time as everyone was using 3D TVs. Um, but yeah, that would be really cool, actually. Or maybe, 
could you even have an iPad Pro where you kind of pair it with an iPhone to do spatial video with two high-res cameras uh, in a rig? That would be pretty cool. That might work, and it, it kind of combines them in post. Hmm, interesting. I like I like the way you're thinking there, Rob. Dual offset high-res cameras. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. Uh, Michael Pepper, not letting Mac apps run on iPad may very well be a brilliant move uh, as a way of pushing developers to allow iPad apps on macOS, but not vice versa. I, I don't know. I think make them go both ways. Like, universal binaries, with, everything's running Apple Silicon now. It shouldn't be that difficult. A lot of the frameworks are the same. It, it should be a much easier thing to just move a project between a Mac and an iPad to take it on the go with you. So, And that would probably help desktop Mac sales, maybe. So people go for like a desktop and then the iPad replaces the laptop aspect. So then you get both devices and it makes more sense. I don't know. Uh, Thomas Rams, uh, Rubenstein, hello, welcome, sir. Uh, I tried to work productively with the iPads for a long time, but I've since given up, I now use my Mac and my MacBook Pro. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Apple ever intended for the iPad to be a replacement for the Mac. I just don't think they ever did. Uh, I think they understand that for a lot of people it can be. For people like my mum, who wants to just look at pictures of the kids and do a bit of email and message people and surf the internet and go on eBay, that kind of stuff is perfect. Like, if you want a recording studio, it's not necessarily perfect. Um, and that's okay. Like, we can have different devices for different things. Let the iPad be an iPad. Get the mug. Uh, they're available online. <laughs> iCaveDave.com forward slash merch. Make iPad iPad again. And yes, they're red, obviously. Um, Evan Rogers. Uh, Dave, with Apple Watch Series 4 rumoured to reach end of life this fall, what features and changes can we expect for the Series X? That's an interesting one. So the Series 10, sorry, don't I don't want to be that guy. Uh, so the uh, Apple Watch Series Twitter that will be hopefully coming out this year. Um, hopefully we're actually getting a proper redesign. I don't think we're going to go round because that's a dumb shape for a smartwatch. Uh, it looks more like a... Um, it looks more like a watch, watch, but it's not a good shape for anything smartwatchy because obviously then text tends to have flat sides and doesn't work. Well, you could have it kind of bulge out, I suppose. Does Samsung do that or Pixel or someone? But this, this is a much better shape for, you know, actually looking at stuff. Like, can you imagine how the keyboard would work on a round one? No, nobody wants that. Uh, also, please don't put any... Um, cameras in them i don't want people staring up my nose it's not a good not a good look for anyone um but yeah apple watch series 4 if that is reaching end of life will that also mean the first generation um apple watch uh, se is also going to reach that because it uses a lot of the same components i think it has the the watch 5 processor so maybe it's got another year in it but that would be that would be disappointing that was the first of the the bigger displays wasn't it um yeah, I'm not sure what else is going to come in the Series 10. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think we should have. Thomas Robinson, thank you so much for the super chat. Very much appreciated, my friend. Um, Steve uh, Steve is saying uh, from Geek's Corner, that looks like a good alternative pencil. Yeah, MetaPen, it's, um, it's really good. It feels like you pick it up, it feels exactly the same as the Apple, uh, Apple Pencil. It's very, very similar and costs almost no money. So... If you've got kids with an iPad, a really, really good option. There will be a proper full uh, review coming out, but the problem is my kids keep stealing my iPad. They're going back to school, though, this week, so fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we've got here. Um, I meant uh, to off, not solid type. Okay, not not quite sure where we were going there. I'm, I'm confused now. Uh, Rob Lincoln, my iPad gets worked with vector 2D drawings. My... Uh, get used as sidecar for 3D work if I ever get into that. Yeah, it's a really good companion device. It's not there to replace them, I don't think. So we shall see. We shall see on that. Oh, solely. Yes, uh, people working solely on the iPad. Thank you, uh, Michael Pepper. <laughs> oh, I was so lost, but that makes sense now. Um, 
I wish Sidecar could work without being on the same account. They let you airplay to an Apple TV or any TV that supports airplay without it being on the same account. It just has to be on the same network. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I think there may be security issues if you were doing something that can interact back. I think that's probably where the, uh, the problem is there. So you could inadvertently connect to the wrong thing and then someone could basically hijack your Mac a bit, I guess, somehow. Or you might not know that they're attached and maybe mirroring your displays whereas uh, with airplay at least they can't affect what you're doing from the airplay device they can't like interact in the same ways they can play stuff that's kind of it uh ipad is my favorite tech device of all time says tech for your needs i i kind of would agree in terms of a leisure device like it is the best way to consume youtube uh, like, you know, streaming services when you're around the house, all that kind of stuff. Um, Michael Moore is saying, do your kids have to use Chromebooks in school? Yeah, they do for a couple of things, but it's like they do it on the web and then they can come home and log into the same accounts on their iPads and do the homework on there, and it's fine. Like, the Chromebooks are not as massive of a thing in the UK, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, they do a bit of coding and stuff on Chromebooks. But they're, they're just as quick typing on an iPad, to be fair. Saran is saying, I don't believe the Series 4 losing support yet. As you said, the Series 5 and SE use the same chipset. will probably be supported another year or two. Yeah, didn't the 3 go on forever as well? And then only get dropped the same year they stopped selling it. That was a bit of a crazy one. Um, yeah, people love their iPads. Like, I don't know why... Like, Tech YouTube seems to have decided that the iPad is useless... And nobody wants it um, because the the sales dropped a little bit. And I think maybe the sales dropped because they last forever. Um, unless you actually break it, they, they just go on and on and on and pretty much work forever. Like we've got an iPad Air 2, which came, I don't know, that's that's got to be like nine years old at this point, something like that. And my goodness, it's like, it's still okay. Like... It has 16 gigs of storage, which means once you've got an operating system on there, you've got about four to play with, which is kind of useless. But it still works. You know, it's all right. Um, Macs mostly get used for long-form typing. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. But if you're just doing writing, like if you are a writer, if you are a journalist, if you are a, you know, a field reporter, something like that, an iPad's great. Because you can use it to capture images if you need to. You can use it to edit video if you need to. It's not the ideal thing for any of these things, but it's fine. You can use it with a keyboard, any Bluetooth keyboard, to do some typing if you need to. You can also use it to relax uh, later in the day. It's a great travel device because you can use it for so many things in not necessarily the perfect way, but a very good, very close to it. Uh, you know, what you would get on a Mac in most situations. When you expect it to be a full recording studio with plugins for Logic Pro, it's probably not going to do that. You know, it's got one hole in it. That's that's a, a big limitation. The same as, you know, if you want to edit a movie, probably don't use your iPad. Like, go to a, you know, if if you're making a Pixar movie, you know, you're not going to render it on an iPad, uh, on a MacBook Air, even if Max Tech thinks you are. You know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like that, they can't render entire, you know, Pixar movies because that's not what they're for. People are testing it against stuff it's not for because it can do it, and then wondering why the results are not great. And that just seems like an unfair test to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm the outlier here. Maybe everything should do everything. And maybe your iPhone should have a display as big as the iPad Pro. And if it doesn't, then the EU is going to get involved and make sure that it does. So, Michael Pepper. I suppose with respect to security concerns, it could be require uh, putting in a pin like how Apple TV does in public spaces. So you can't connect to the wrong person's iPad and get your Mac hijacked. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't right now. So maybe that's why. And maybe that's something that they can add in future where you can do like uh, like secure bond or something like that. You know, side sidecar security. Yeah, something like that. 
that would be a great thing for them to bring out this uh, dub dub and we are doing the dub dub t-shirt again the dub dub t-shirt is coming back it will have your faces on it so get your emojis ready because it's coming back apple watch needs a full camera for face id the watch can view uh what you are taking uh, no why do we want face id on it we don't need that if anything the side button could have touch id that would make much more sense but it's like it's a four digit pin once when you put it on per day to unlock it because you, you've not been wearing it and then because it stays on your wrist it knows it's on you still so there's no reason for it to no reason to add that tag and that cost and all of that stuff for the sake of one pin inclusion and it can already use your phone's face id to validate it so you put it on and then you unlock your phone with your face id and your watch unlocks you never have to put your pin in again if you don't want to we've already solved that one uh, Michael Pepper, my mum uses an iPad Air 2 and my dad uses the first gen 9.7 inch iPad Pro. Yeah, these things go on forever. Uh, the Nash, NASA shirt is t-shirt. Uh, the Nash, NASA shirt is NASA shirt is cool too. Why thank you. Uh, this one was from like a super... I, I think I might have got it for Christmas actually. But yeah, thank you. Um, did an emoji the other day as prep. Oh, thank you, Rob. Yeah, everyone get your emojis ready. Or if you're a Vision Pro user, I will also accept um, your persona. So we're gonna we're gonna put uh, a whole bunch of different people's faces on it. Does everyone was everyone here when we did the last one? Dub uh, Dub 2021. Um, it was great. Uh, like everyone got really involved. I think we got like 60 or 80 different emojis on there from different members of the audience. It was great fun. Uh, Michael Pepper Tech says, I unlock my iPhone with Face ID and that unlocks my Apple Watch Series 7. Exactly. That's the joy of it, isn't it? That's that's the great thing. That, um, yeah. Yeah. Like everything works together. It's as if they've put together some sort of an ecosystem. If only people noticed that Apple was doing this ecosystem stuff. Anyway, let's get on to a couple of the other news topics. Do keep throwing your questions down in the comments because I enjoy this format immensely. Uh, we're going to aim to hit the hour as usual, which we do for the podcast as well. Um, I am also live streaming tomorrow night with someone else. Not sure if it's going to be on here or on their channel, but watch out on the channel uh, to find out. Um, Apple has laid off over 600 people uh, after the Apple Car project was cancelled, which is never a good thing, is it? That's never something that we want to hear. But the vast majority, it seems, of the Apple Watch, uh, sorry, the Apple Car project team uh, got moved over to AI. And there is, I think, a real possibility that people that were hired because they're really good at building transmissions and suspension for cars, steering racks, um, you know, material scientists that maybe worked on tires and braking systems may not be the ideal candidates for AI applications building. Maybe. I don't know. It just seems like not all engineers have exactly the same skill set that might be required for AI. I could be wrong. But uh, but yeah, it's obviously it's very upsetting when people lose their jobs. Um, and I know that a lot of people on Twitter have been saying that this is because Apple is doomed because that's the cool thing to say. That's the cool thing that all the cool kids say. I I don't think that's um, I don't think that's the problem. I, I think I think this is mainly we employed hardware engineers for cars and they are not the same as AI engineers, necessarily. So, yeah, that's... Oh, Sigma Judge is here, my friend. Uh, question, how are you so damn amazing, Dave? Thank you so much for everything, buddy. I'll be down your way next weekend. Oh, you lovely man. Um, Sigmund is back with the Magic Rays of Light podcast, by the way, guys. They've had a, a few weeks off because he's had some health things going on. Um, I'll leave it to their podcast to explain that. Uh, but if you don't listen to Magic Rays of Light, number one, what are you doing? 
And number two, uh, it's very, very good content. All focused around Apple TV. You do get a bit of uh, other streaming services stuff in there. You get a bit of Oscars prediction stuff. That came up in the last one. Um, Sigmund's better at um, guessing the, uh, the Oscars than Devon, it turns out. Spoilers. But yeah, uh, and, and a bit of Apple Arcade, that kind of stuff. Uh, Apple Arcade was... Um, one of those things that I use a lot, Polytopia Plus has been my jam for the last week, uh, I've got to say. Polytopia Plus. It's on Apple Arcade, and it's amazing. Uh, right, let's just get back to where I was in the questions. Uh, so Michael Pepper Tech is saying, Pass Keys has been super useful uh, to use Face ID from my phone to access websites securely, even on a Windows computer. Kind of funny using Face IDs with Windows indirectly. Have you noticed how much more Apple is integrating with Windows now? I hadn't, actually. That's not something that I pay as much attention to, which I really should. Um, it may be something that I can uh, play around with a little bit because I am getting Project Quadra. I actually fired up the old iMac, the uh, the 2012 27-inch um, iMac that is going to become Project Quadra. May have a little bit of time to play with it tomorrow. <clears throat> But it is going to be uh, quad booting. So we're taking the name, the Quadra, from the classic uh, PowerPC days of the Mac. And, uh, yeah, we're going to make it quad boot. So it's going to have Mac OS as recent as we can possibly do, probably with Open Core uh, to do, hopefully, Sonoma on a 2012 iMac. That'll be kind of fun. Uh, and it's also going to have, I think it's maybe Mojave that's on there at the minute. Uh, I wanted to have one of the ones that can run the 32-bit versions of uh, of apps on it. Uh, I also wanted to have um, a version of Linux, and it may be Steam Machine, because I think that would be quite fun to put on there, um, Steam OS, and then Windows of some sort, probably 10, because I don't think 11 will run on it, because it's not got the weird like Intel special T2 equivalent security chip. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the plan with that external hard drives to run some of it, you know, external um, SSDs to keep it running quickly because it's got the old spinny hard drive in it and everything. It's that old. Uh, but yeah, uh, what have we got here? So um, AI has a very steep learning curve. I'm doing a refresher on it right now. That says Michael Moy. Yeah, I, I don't see myself getting too involved in like setting up AI stuff, but I think we're all going to be using it pretty soon. Um Rob Lincoln saying cancelling the Apple car was the best decision, all told. AI is current, not currently up to the task of driving just yet. I mean, different models are... I still think AI driving is probably still safer than humans in most cases. And I think there's definitely going to be a turning point where enough cars have got AI built in uh, that they can kind of mesh network themselves and work as a whole as opposed to individual cars trying to avoid human drivers, which I think is probably going to be the biggest issue at the moment. Um, Malcolm was saying this, he agrees with Rob, and that Ford and Toyota are going heavy on hybrids now, as I think uh, electrics are losing market interest in the US. I don't think that's the right move for them. I'm not going to lie. Whether people are interested in them or not, that is the future. Do you remember, like, 20... 30 years ago we were saying the oil will run out by like 2050 we ain't made more more oil we might have discovered a little bit more but that's just kicking the can down the road a little bit um it's it's definitely going to be the way it's going to be electric cars uh we've got sodium ion batteries uh that are in usable forms now not necessarily for cars because they're not quite as energy dense but like 160 watt hours per kilogram uh, with sodium ion batteries which doesn't involve uh, digging up awful minerals and stuff which yep yeah, that's a problem right now it's definitely a problem but it's still moving us in the right direction you know the power might be coming from coal at the minute but it can come from other stuff there's there's all sorts of reasons that moving to electric makes the most sense hydrogen we've also heard about you know uh, uh, power what are they called Hydrogen power cells or fuel cell batteries. That's the ones um, where you basically have a bottle of hydrogen. Now, from memory, hydrogen, pretty pretty boomy. Um, the, uh, the Hindenburg showed us that, if nothing else. 
but also hydrogen is almost impossible to work with like pipelines for hydrogen like hydrogen tanks they all leak a lot a lot because it's the smallest atom there is they get through gaps really easily like seeping through other materials it doesn't matter how airtight or watertight you make them hydrogen is going to go through hydrogen gonna hydrogen so i don't think that hydrogen is going to make much sense either but we'll see anything's better than gas um and yeah the uh, the hybrids are better than gas but the electrics are better than hybrids <laughs> yeah otherwise you're just carrying two engines around for no real reason um anyway back to apple stuff uh, tech for your needs says uh, I don't believe the iPad is underpowered its performance depends on the intended use as mentioned earlier some channels are being run entirely on iPad absolutely you can run a channel on your phone what does confuse me though is when people are saying that uh, you know there's no point in putting an M3 in the iPad because you can't use it of course you can I've said this in a few videos that's like saying we've got i3 uh, you know, Intel chips, which can run every program that a thread ripper can run. So why have thread rippers? It's like because they're faster and they will do those things faster, and you can do more of those things at the same time. Like, don't just criticize the idea of having more power in a device. Oh, we don't need it, but you can use it, even in an iPad. Rob Link is saying maybe I'm biased because I'm a professional school bus driver. We're transferring to electric buses because they're so much more uh, affordable to operate. Yes. Wow. Electric vehicles, cheaper than gas. Um, whereabouts do you live as well, Rob? Just like country-wise, because here in the UK, like, it's massively cheaper to use electricity because petrol, gasoline is super expensive. Uh, Michael Pepper saying my the issue with EVs is how the uh, energy is made. It's less efficient to create electricity first, then convert that into a battery in an EV, then converting fuel in an ICE. No, it's not. That's not true at all. Um, with a uh, with a an ICE car, you're getting maybe thirty percent at the absolute best. Um, whereas with uh, with electricity, even if you're charging it into EVs you're almost up to like 90% efficiency. So that's just not true. Helps that uh, helps that I live in a ver <laughs> relative mecca for renewable energy, says Rob Lincoln. Well, that's that's a, a, a boon for everyone, I think, um, that you live in a place like that. And where is it? How can we copy you? Because, yeah, we... It, it's what needs to be done. Like, there's no question about it. It's not It's not up in the air, is it? Um, yeah, we, we just need to be better at it. The dry side of Washington State rural area. Oh, okay, cool. Right, Washington State is nowhere near Washington, D.C., right? It's... I'm going to say it's, like, near California-ish. My American geography is not necessarily great. Electricity is 30 cents per kilowatt hour for me. One of the huge problems in the US is the grid is not ready for EVs. Well, fix it then. Because when the petrol car arrived, there weren't enough gas stations either. Not only is it going to make... Uh, not only is going to the M3 and an iPad going to make it more powerful for processing, but it makes doing things more efficient, says Michael Pepper. Yeah, of course it does. Exactly. This is the beauty of it. Like... When you make the chips better, it gets better. In Boston, the electric companies want $2.4 billion to beef up the grid. That doesn't even address sourcing the power. Well, that's okay. Oh, just south of California. Just south of? Just south of California. Let's hope. But yeah, I knew it was somewhere. Canada on the west coast. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um. What else have we got? Oh iPhone 16 and 16 Pro blanks. So we actually kind of know, probably, what the iPhone 16 and 16 Pro is going to look like. And it's uh, this. So what we have here is, uh, yeah, this is basically what the case manufacturers use. 
to know where stuff is going to be on their new devices, um, as far as we know. Oh, Tim Kinetics is here. Hello, buddy. Welcome. Welcome aboard. Um, yeah, this is this is it. This is what the uh, the next iPhones are going to look like. Um, get excited because the Pros definitely look completely different. I think you'll agree. They're much shinier. Um, and the iPhone 16s, uh, you know, they've gone more along the lines of what we kind of expected is that they would look a bit like the camera modules on the iPhone 10 and the 10s and the tennis match. But yeah, uh, I don't hate them. I kind of prefer the camera bumps actually on the uh, on the 16 rather than the pros. I'm not going to lie. I kind of like that. And we knew that they were going to move this way because spatial video. Uh, and all of these camera, uh, all of these blanks, by the way, do also have that capture button that we were hearing about. So that does exist. That is a thing, by all accounts, at least. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be capacitive. So that uh, that capture button that we're going to get, which is brand new, you're going to be able to slide your finger sideways on it, and that's going to zoom in and out potentially. That's what we assume. You're going to be able to give it a slight press and it's going to kind of make sure the focus is right, just like a real camera. And then you're going to press it all the way down. It's going to take your picture. Amazing. Like, wonderful. How how great is that? Uh, it's also, you know, it's a camera button. I, I, I heard a lot of people have been, like, super excited about it. And we were hearing that all the buttons were going to become capacitive, but now not so much. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get, we're gonna see where we go with that. But yeah, what do you guys think of the the look? I I think this uh, this sixteen looks pretty cool actually, and I'm glad they didn't just leave the big square that looked like an app icon. Uh, I kind of like the uh, the look. Hmm, let me know. Uh, right, so back to the chat. Michael uh, Pepitech is saying is the U.S. is creating most electricity from coal or natural gas, and that's problematic. We need more solar and water turbines. And to think about the materials that we put into batteries for EVs and how short the uh, lifetime of the battery cells are with current tech. Yeah, I mean, if we can get to these sodium batteries, that's going to be great because uh, I think we've got quite a lot of seawater and that tends to contain salt. And we could then basically desalinate that water um, to get the salt out and the chlorine and use the chlorine for our swimming pools and the salt for our batteries and the water for our drinkies, which is great. That's that's a great combination. I think we're all happy with that. And the sea level's rising, so we, we can do with getting rid of some water, really. I don't think it's going to affect it that much. Uh, Rob Lincoln says, I like big camera bumps, and I cannot lie. So I'm not going to sing that for you, my friend. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, I, I think these, I think they look pretty good. I'm, I'm not upset by these at all. I think they look pretty good we're also hearing that the display sizes are going up by like 0.2 inches on the pros as well so they're going to be a little bit bigger a little bit less bezels i don't think the devices themselves are going to be any bigger so that's fine i, I think we're all happy with that aren't we um yeah anyone got any more questions and then we're going to wrap this show up fairly soon i think just to uh to make sure that everyone's happy and we can uh, we can get on with our days it is friday night here in the uk it's just coming up to 11 p.m uh, my voice is getting a little bit tired because I forgot to bring any water into the room with me, which was a foolish, foolish uh, mistake. But it has been lovely to hang out with everyone. Uh, as I say, this is going to be a bit of a different version of the Aluminium podcast. This is going to be a live version because I didn't have a guest this week because I've been away and I didn't have time to arrange anything properly. So... This is all good. Right, let's see. Lifetimes are much better on recent batteries, says Rob Lincoln. The quality is just so much better. Materials purer. We'll probably get 20 years out of our bus batteries. That's pretty cool. Uh, Team Kinetics is saying our colour selection on the iPhone, uh, iPhone 16 Pro needs to be better. Is titanium the limiting factor? It is kind of, yes. Um, so we can't do reds, as far as I'm aware, in terms of the current coating or colouring um, systems that they use. However, Apple does have some patents for kind of uh, an acid wash that pockmarks the titanium and then they can add a dye into those pores that have opened up and then they can seal it. 
So that is a potential which is a, a little bit more along the lines of what they've done in the past with the power book titaniums. Um, so just a little little bit of an idea there. Uh, but yes, I think hopefully they will go a little bit bolder with the colours, but I am not holding my breath whatsoever. Uh, Evan Rogers says pizza or coffee. Oh, this is a tricky one, but pizza. Um, yeah, pizza. It's not that tricky, it turned out. Uh, Rob Lincoln, thanks for the chat. It was great. Well, I tried very much so much. Uh, thank you thank you all for being here. Uh, tech for your needs. That's the one area that's lacking battery technology has not improved despite graphene's potential. Uh, more rumors mentioned. Yeah, graphene batteries, it's, it's a thing, but it sounds like it's very expensive to create. I think these sodium ones are, are probably going to be... A bigger thing sodium lithium they live in that same column in the periodic table from memory could be wrong couldn't i uh but hopefully <laughs> hopefully i've not completely messed that up but anyway you guys thank you so much for being here we are going to wrap this one up uh thank you all for coming uh very much love your time uh team kinetics don't worry this is going out as the podcast you can catch up on the stuff that you missed uh, but look out for Team Kinetics in a future video. That's all I'm saying. Thank you so much for being here. We will see you in the next one.